Hey everyone, so just once again kind of wanted to apologise for not being particularly active on YouTube. I hope people can understand. Um, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, a few things that I've been thinking about recently. So if you don't know already, the Lucid Guide uh, now has a forum up on the website. Uh, so feel free to join there if you want to talk to other like-minded Lucid Dreamers particularly people more on the science side, it's a really good place. I will leave a link to that in the description box below. But anyway, I, uh, I wrote a, uh, a forum post on there a few days ago now, just talking about things that I'd noticed in terms of um, how my voices interact with both lucid and non-lucid dreams. And uh, I thought I would basically talk about that post here and uh, and let people know what I've been thinking. So I've often spoken about uh, using lucid dreaming as a way to communicate with the voices that I hear um, to try and get a better understanding of what they could possibly represent and what I might be experiencing then. Uh, but even though I've spoken a lot about uh, those kind of interactions in lucid dreams, I realise I haven't spoken a great deal about how those voices present themselves in non-lucid dreams and how they present themselves in lucid dreams uh, when I haven't willed them to be there. So there are two that tend to make uh, frequent appearances and that is Ted and Dean. Uh, Darren doesn't tend to appear much at all. Uh, Scott occasionally, um, Sid, I can't really remember the last time but yeah Ted and Dean are the two that are there predominantly. Ted is probably the one that appears the most and he's either there alongside me or he's sort of talking through me. As a sort of separate entity to me, he doesn't really um, interact with the dream environment too much. He just seems to sort of be there at the side. Uh, sometimes I just feel comforted by having him there. Uh, but when he is talking through me, it's usually in a dream where I'm feeling quite tense and stressed out, there are people around me who are uh, not listening to me, who are treating me like shit, who are taking advantage of me, and Ted sort of seems to almost take over and start saying things that I wouldn't normally say uh, in waking life in these kind of situations, but there are probably things that I wish I could say but just would never do. And it's often quite a liberating feeling even though it's only taking place within the, uh, the realms of the dream world. If he appears in a lucid dream, it's usually sort of as a guide. Uh, he'll be there and he'll kind of be talking to me about things and kind of leading me around the dream environment and he'll be asking me various questions and we'll be exploring stuff like that. He, he kind of has that role of a guide. As for Dean, he has on occasion hijacked my dreams. Um, particularly when I first started hearing him, I tried to ignore him as best I could. At the time, I would have been, I want to say I'd recently turned 20, so, you know, I was hearing four voices now and I uh, didn't want to deal with that, so I kind of pushed Dean away as much as I could. And by doing that, the only way he could really get my attention was through dreams, because that was the thing that I valued the most, and he knew that if he was going to get my attention, it would be that way. So a lot of the time in lucid dreams, he would kind of almost um, stop me from doing the things that I wanted to do, and start kind of controlling the dream himself, and making the narrative go along with what he wanted as a way to get me to notice him, and it did in fact work. So really for him, if he ever does turn up in a dream, it's usually more to uh, alert me to something or get me to listen to him and, and uh, focus on what he wants, stuff like that. And the reason I was finding this to be really interesting is obviously the way that they um, behave and interact in non-lucid dreams is quite different to how they behave and react in lucid dreams. So in a non-lucid dream, if they're there, they're usually just like any other dream character. They they don't necessarily have a lot of importance. They don't necessarily um, behave like themselves. 
they will just kind of be a random bat character um, with little relevance to what's going on. Whereas in a lucid dream it feels like I'm really talking to them, that it's the same uh, experience, the same voice, the same whatever, as if I'm speaking to them in waking life. So it is almost like I am sharing the dream with my voices. And as well, you know, they, they are aware of stuff that goes on in my lucid dreams. So it is more like it is actually them than just a random dream character that my brain has just, you know, used to fill in the, the dream environment. And what I particularly found interesting about this is if in a lucid dream I am conscious, you know, the, my prefrontal cortex is back online, all of that stuff, if I'm conscious within a lucid dream, would, does that mean that they are also conscious within that dream? And if so, would that highlight what's happening inside the brain when I'm having these experiences? So would that be able to indicate the parts of the brain that are responsible for hearing voices and hallucinations and reality testing and all of that stuff? I think I've explained that correctly. I'll find out when I listen back and see how terrible a job I did trying to explain that. So yeah, if if within a lucid dream it's, it's more like the actual voices, then it might be able to tell us something more about voice hearing and hallucinations and all that stuff in general. I, I've kind of confused myself there and waffled on a bit, but I hope you understand <laughs> what I was trying to say there. Now, obviously this is something I will have to keep kind of experimenting with because at the same time maybe my voices will be able to recall some of my non-lucid dreams because if we're going to go down the avenue of these voices are parts of myself then surely they would be able to um, recall any information or memories or whatever that I already have. And at the same time, even in a lucid dream, I it might not always actually be them. So I kind of have to keep experimenting with this and um, I guess inviting them into my lucid dreams and allowing them to kind of uh, have more space in that environment and also to uh, be aware of when they pop up in non-lucid dreams and if they are able to recall those dreams. So I've really butchered this video. When I had this written down it was far more succinct. Um, but yeah, I will also leave a link to, to the original post uh, on, on the lucid guide uh, in case you didn't follow any of what I just said. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope that it was watchable for the most part and you understood what I was saying. Uh, but yes, if you would like to support me on Patreon, you can. There will be a link to that in the description. And as well as that, there is a 20% uh, off discount code for Vivid Dream products that will also be down below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I've been Max, a.k.a. The Rara Rabbit, and I'll see you in the next video.